first of all, thank you very much for taking your time to talk to us. No worries, of course. Um, first of all, can you please describe to, to us what your, what your role entails as the Vice President of Student Activities? Well, the Vice President of Student Activities, in a big way to say, deals with all the 90 societies that we have on campus. Well, 90 is a fluctuating number, but that's about how much we have affiliated right now. So I deal with their daily day-to-day -day business, so what kind of uh, rooms they need to book or what kind of events they're putting and what kind of information they need to organize all that. Also, I'm facilitating them receiving the funding that's available uh, through the Funding Council and the Society Council matters uh, are also part of uh, what I need to do. Also, the VPSA is the sabbatical position within the executive team that deals with welfare, apart from the VPSW. Uh, on a daily basis, me being present always in the office, and I also have the opportunity to have my own projects. And this year, those have been Raising and Giving Week, the International Festival, and upscaling the We Use Me campaign. Okay, uh, so when you took the position, what um, was there anything that took you by surprise, any part of the job that you didn't expect? or? Well, to be honest, I was very, op very optimistic at the start that I will have enough time to implement whatever I wanted. Uh, however, as uh, the ball rose and you realize how many different aspects every single event or a campaign entails and how much people and resources you need to outreach to, this seems to be fairly impossible uh, if you want to have a, a normal working day and at the same time uh, enjoy everything else as uh, normal people. So. Yeah, that was the, the the biggest frustration, knowing that there is a limited amount of time to achieve. Yeah, of course. Could you give us a, just a quick recap of your policies on which you got elected? Uh, there are two, ma uh, three major policies that I've put forward when I was being elected. First one was uh, to help societies get external funding. However, this year when I came into uh, the VPSA role, I realized that actually quite a few societies are fairly oblivious about how much funding they have in the first instance. They cannot access their own uh, banking accounts and things like that, so I had to spend, and still spend, quite a lot of energy to actually capitalize all that and make sure that they know how much they have, how much they can outreach to. We are currently understanding the uh, so society's funding council because we don't have that many applications coming through uh, that deserve attention and can be granted the funds, of course. Uh, on the other side, the other campaign and e event that I really wanted to organize and I'm in currently in the process of putting through uh, was the International Cultures Festival. It will be from the 1st of March to the 8th of March. Posters are going out actually about today or tomorrow. Just to prove them. Um, and the third one was the Reuse Me campaign, which proved to be a great success within Hulls for the past two years. But I really wanted all students on campus to be able to leave items they believe have more life in them and then for more students to be able to pick them up at the start of next year. Okay. Um, one of the, on the on the GISA website under your policies, um, uh, you know, you talk about the youth empowerment and you know establishing a Dundee as a hub of international activism. You know, what were the main goals for that and uh, how that you've achieved with that kind of co conference and you know how far you achieved them? Uh, well, it started all with the European Youth in Action uh, project that we did when I was still a student in my fourth year last year with the Diplomat Society, the Discover to Inspire project, and we managed to attract about 33 different members of the na uh, citizens of 33 different countries to Dundee, a total of 100 participants to discuss the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, that went very well, I must say, because this led into the other thing which will conclude the International uh, Fest Coaches Festival this year, uh, which was establishing a United Nations Association branch for Dundee exclusively. Uh, because with that event in May, we've been recognized on the United Nations Association and Interest Group, so to say, within the UK, and we've been given the privilege to have a branch on our own, which hasn't happened for Dundee, but happened in St. Andrews or Edinburgh, for example. So I think that on this aspect, we have also managed to, I have also managed to deliver the, the result I was hoping for. Uh, apart from that, the Diplomat Society and the Model United Nations Society on campus this year are very uh, fluid in how they work and interact and they have sent so many various uh, delegations to 
even more conferences than before and all these people are mostly uh, newbies they haven't been to a conference and that's their first time encounter with such events so they really enjoyed it and they have uh, attended not just simulations but actually professional conferences and have brought in valuable partnership agreements and have shown that then the students can in fact be a very high quality uh, international uh, very well versed diplomats so I'm very proud of this result and I can see now that the two societies really want to interact and maybe have a second type of Discover to Inspire conference. And the most important thing is that the project was approved by the British Council on a fi final stage. So this has been all certified as a success by them as well. Okay. Um, another one of your policies was to organize workshops for societies and uh, student groups who need financial support. Could you please give us an example of uh, where that has worked and what have you... I would have, again, I'm, we are getting back to the financial matters of yeah. societies. I would have loved for this to be uh, a feasible, practical outcome of uh, what I wanted to do. However, when a society doesn't know who their treasurer was or how many funds they have left in their society account, the, the whole idea of how much they can get becomes a, sec becomes a secondary matter. So I need now, and I have focused on actually making sure societies know how much funds they have instead of trying to coach them on how to get more. Because uh, more and more a problem for societies becomes how to manage funds, how to understand what is appropriate to spend money on and what is not. Uh, and therefore it uh, all reflects as to whether they are capable securing external funding as well. Okay. Um, all of your policies um, revolve around organization and management um, in your roles like BPCA. Um, would you describe yourself as more of an organizer or a hands-on representative? Well, within the, exec the sabbatical executive and the executive team, every executive member has uh, more or less a designated area. And as much as I have been elected by a certain number of people, there is a, a managerial aspect, an organizational aspect to my role, which is a daily to daily task. So I am trying to put forward uh, information that I reach and am informed of, for example, the Wi-Fi situation within the House of Residence. I have been promoting this issue on the SRC for quite a while, and so quite soon we are going to have a definite response that will be minuted, and I believe has already been minuted, actually, on the past SRC. So I do combine these, but yes, a fairly significant amount of my time is dedicated to working with these 90 societies and whoever is a member of these societies as a particular part of the student body. Okay. Um, what, 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 what's your day-to-day -day, uh, job? What, what kind of things does it involve and entail? Well, day-to-day -day it really depends on the project that, uh, that I am working. Uh, my most intense, intense period was when I was working on the Raising and Giving campaign, which uh, despite the fact that we also was a week, uh, for me mo was more or less a four-month campaign and preparation because I had to basically meet on a daily basis with various actors that we would engage, either as sponsors or partners or promoters within uh, the events and the, the wider campaign, which was actually very well uh, heard within Dundee, uh, not so much on campus. Uh, however, day to day my meeting would be at least with three societies, then a couple of volunteers who would like to participate in my current project, then for sure I have in my calendar events that are dedicated to my uh, repre representation uh, duties. So they're fixed for that and I do have them in my calendar weekly. So that would be the day, basically. And always there is an ad hoc duty that needs to be met, either by an email that I've received uh, in the late afternoon or by someone just coming and requesting help, so. Okay, um, tell me about your international culture festival. Um, you know, it involves um, all the national societies that you, you um, national societies that you know, plan to organize. So what's happening there with that and um, what you want societies to achieve from it? Uh, well, it starts on the 1st of March and it will last until the 8th of March. The main idea of the event is that when international students arrive, they usually get a huge exposure of what Scottish culture is all about or British culture is all about, but there is rarely an occasion where actually internationalism on campus is celebrated, where all these different nations are given the bow in their hands and told, so show us what you are about. 
So this is the main idea of the International Cultures Festival. It hasn't happened yet in Dundee, despite the fact that other British universities have it as a fairly established tradition. So uh, I would aim to, in these uh, eight days, to basically explore cultures, music, uh, traditions, crafts, particular celebrations, uh, films, art. So on the 1st of March we have the Taiwanese celebration of the New Year's with um, paper lanterns launch from the green, so hopefully the weather will be all fine and we won't be sh rushed in, but that's what's planned. About 110 paper Chinese lanterns have been ordered, so people will be just welcome to, to come and join. Uh, on, on the same day we have celebration of crafts, so there is a room booked within the house, people can just come in and just see how uh, Arabic calligraphy is performed or how Bulgarians and Romanians do their Martinica uh, tradition for the 1st of March. Then on the 2nd of March we have a full uh, half a day late afternoon uh, international films festival in uh, the tower building. So different uh, films that have been awarded, either Pandor or uh, an Ac Academy Award will be shown, such as Amelie Poulain and a couple of Russian ones. Uh, and we will also probably have a Brazilian one. So all these kinds of stuff uh, will be happening over the weekend. Then on Monday we have an interfaith event within the chaplaincy organized by all the faith societies on campus. Uh, on Friday the 8th we have celebration of the International Women's Day uh, powered by uh, societies that are interested uh, in this topic. We also have the United Nations Association Dundee branch launch in the evening. For this whole week, uh, the International Festival coincides with the uh, National Green Week, so there are lots of sustainability events. On Monday, uh, no, sorry, on Wednesday we have the International Sports Day in the afternoon, in conjunction with the Sports Union and uh, the Hellenic Society. There will be a mini World Cup uh, type of championship on the campus green. So all these things uh, will be revolving and happening quite a few more probably, but I've just forgotten them yeah. on top of my mind. Of course, of course. Uh, how long has it taken you to organize such a... It's a lot. There are lots of societies involved. Uh, the uncertainty factor is great because you obviously expect on uh, the voluntary work of people who are also students and who also have their own commitments and despite the fact they are very keen to help, they sometimes are just prevented to doing so. So. Uh, the time is not such an issue as is the the certain the predictability of the success and as to whether something is going to happen. So okay, um, uh, why do you see society as being as an important part of university life? You know, what's the point of them in your opinion? Well, society is everything that you do outside of academia. So basically, if you ha that's how you develop your personal interest and your individuality and you prove your characteristics and you show your uh, particular make uh, makeup and this is the best way to show to a future employer what differs you from any other humanities graduate or economics graduate because if you have had interest in sports or uh, in particular society which deals with art maybe in your future position the employer will value you over someone else if you're going to work behind the scenes uh, in London for a theatre for example so I think these are very important things that students need to, to pay serious attention to and uh, I am currently trying to, to make sure that this their participation is institutionalized and they know how and when they participated in society and the university recognizes that on transcripts later on so it's actually provable and uh, the, whoever is the employee can say well yes actually this person has been on that society and they have been president for such and such period and maybe this makes them much better than our other candidates. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Can you give us a brief account of what you see to be your biggest personal achievement this year? So far anyway. Uh, well, so far I, I'm quite happy with what happened with uh, Raising and Giving Week. Uh, not so much with the amount of funds we've raised, uh, because we did double what was raised previously and Rug Week is a fairly young event within the history of uh, DUSA. It's just two years, despite the fact that the first rag week was in the late 60s, but there was a huge gap when nothing happened. Uh, 
Uh, I was very happy that we managed to outreach to so many different community members and we partnered with Cash for Kids and Tayside Children with Cancer and Leukemia. We proved that networking works not only on an individual level but different organizations can get a serious net benefit of it. Uh, so I'm very happy of, of this, yeah. Okay. Um, obviously nobody is perfect, so what would you say your biggest uh, failure this year so far has been? Well, I, I think I will go back again to, to raising and giving week because it's very important to, to be able to critically self-reflect on particular uh, organizational matters and I think that if I have had a bit more of experience or desire to, to have attention in particular moments within the organization of raising and giving week, we could have probably achieved better. Uh, but again, it's something, a lesson to be learned from in the future and to leave my legacy behind <laughs> for someone. Okay. Um, that brings me up to my next question. Uh, what have you learned from this position? Well, so at the very start, as someone who comes from a completely different cultural background, I was very interested how a student-led organization and an entity which is in fact non-for-profit can run and generate uh, profit that is then reinvested in the students. So that was my main learning priority and target when I started uh, being VPSA. So I think that after now about eight months or less, I don't know, maybe eight months, uh, I have uh, managed to come to a certain level where I can say that I, I have g gotten a very good grasp of how this mechanism functions and that's what I value after the experience. Okay. Uh, if you could give one piece of advice to the future of UPSA, what would it be? Oh, um, never underestimate the time you have uh, and never over plan maybe the amount of initiatives you would like to have. So be very, very pessimistic at the start as to how much time you have uh, because in fact it's already in a blink of a moment that I'm here, eight months into the position, and I have literally not felt this time. I, at every single week there was something that was a priority or something that needs to be done. So time runs really quickly. Uh, so if you want to achieve and you want to excel in certain projects, just make sure you have very clear tasks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. If that's your advice for next year, that's, that's your advice. Um, what can we expect from you to see from you for the, for the rest of the year? Obviously, you have a couple months left in office. The, the main one is uh, the international festival, and then comes time for the We Use Me scheme. I'm currently negotiating with the university and a couple of departments within the university that are natural partners in this initiative to find space on campus that can be used pre only for this so that we can actually promote the campaign uh, and afterwards basically May through, through the 1st of July would be wrapping up the admin work uh, on society so making sure I have information on all the accounts, I have information on the current members, all, all the committee members that have been elected at the end of this year so that whoever comes into my shoes uh, arrives into a more or less ordered system of information. Okay. What do you think about the general opinion uh, on campus that you've seen? Well, what can I say? I mean, it's a couple of people, if you put it against the, the 15,000 students we have uh, overall. So uh, there is a fairly big chance that you will run across the people who don't know uh, what we do. Uh, there are two, it's a two-way street, uh, the communication between your exec and the students. Obviously, if you're ignorant and you don't want to check the website, as some people said, they, they didn't and weren't proactive enough, then you wouldn't know. Uh, however, also UC is doing uh, quite a lot to make sure to engage with these students. We have just launched a new website, we are investing quite a lot in UC's own media outlets. Uh, and we are trying to make sure that these media outlets cover not just our commercial uh, activities that in the end generate profit to the students, but they also reflect what we do on a day-to-day -day pastoral service. Uh, and we have probably not aced this process to perfection where we actually make sure that what we do is branded as our own action and your sales executive should work towards that, make sure that the outlets are actually working 
for us as well, as much as they're working for the commercial benefit of the institution. Uh, but it also is to the students to, to pick up the leaflets that we leave in key locations within the union and on campus and just uh, get themselves acquainted with who we are. Uh, I have been here for four years now and I'm sure that, uh, and I know, have known that this has been an issue for every single executive team uh, to communicate who they are and to make sure the students know them. The best and most exciting period comes across now when students actually will meet all the candidates outside trying to campaign. So it will be up to these people to make sure that, that they know whom they vote for. I've received about 600 votes on the election, so I can say that there are 600 people for sure on campus that have been or have left, but who knew who I was and what I did, and they voted therefore for me. So it's up to the students as well to, to make their step towards the candidate and ask them, question them, and make sure that they outreach for their help at a later stage when those people are elected. So. It's great to know, it's important to make service like this because they generate interviews like this uh, and in the end there will be more information in the public space but again I would request and uh, appeal to all students uh, to make sure that they, they themselves look into what USA can provide for them. Okay, um, so um, on that you know you have an exact blog which uh, you're the only person who's updated it twice since it started in last um, August. Um, you know, why, why hasn't it the weekly blog been... Well, we, we have thought about the weekly blog a lot and as the girl from the video reflected, Yusa has been sending a lot of emails and push-up alerts, so I, we have considered against this simply because it works the, the wrong way uh, and students, instead of waiting or reading what we post, they just ignore it because it's one of all the information they receive over a week. So we decided against the weekly updates, but for updates uh, related with key events. Uh, so the next one would be the AGM, when Ian Donnery, secretary, will be uh, writing a blog on that, or after Daniel uh, makes uh, sure that all the candidates for the due self late managers are out there presented, he will be writing a blog himself. So that's how it goes. After the international festival, it will be my turn again, because that will be another major event that would have happened. And then after election certain, it would be the deputy president's uh, turn to write. So this is why the weekly hasn't been weekly, again, in, uh, in favor of students. Okay. Uh, what do you think the current and the future exec could, um, could do to increase the, the exec profile? Because obviously you said that you've been a student for the past four years and you've noticed that like, uh, in the past as well. What do you think they can uh, do? I think a major aspect of this whole uh, issue is communication. Uh, we have uh, incredible opportunities, both technological and uh, service-wise, uh, to make sure that we communicate more what we do and that we engage more people of uh, those who are new Southlets managers to, to do, uh, to reflect what we do. Uh, so I think that the next uh, executive team would need to work more successfully with the, the DUSA media managers to make sure that the information of the events we do is presented accurately and more often to the public than commercial uh, inputs. Okay. So. And a final question, uh, just personally, when you finish, uh, when you finish your, your position here, what, what, are, what are your f future plans? Like? Well, uh, uh, things developed very quickly for me last March. At the same time when I got elected, uh, I pretty much got an offer from a postgraduate institution uh, in the USA. So hopefully this is the plan for me to, to start a postgraduate degree in international relations and economics. Okay, do you have any further plans after that or do you...? Well, no, I think that for now I have learned to, to live uh, fairly one to one year uh, plan rather than try to, to look in the very far future and okay. I say what I want to do. Okay, fantastic. That, that was it. Thank you very much no for worries. talking to us. Yeah.